Today we'll be taking text input from our user and printing it out again. Here is our program from the last episode. I would also like to issue a correction from that last video because 4 in EAX is actually not standard out. It is in fact the syscall number for syswrite because that's different I guess. So that means that 0 in EBX is actually standard out. I don't know why but for the nerds out there, there you go. Now in the previous episode I briefly touched on the idea of a section. Now I also briefly mentioned the idea of uninitialized variables and initialized variables. Now if we want to take text input we will obviously need an uninitialized variable because we don't know what's going to be in the buffer. So let's create a new section. Section.bss now in here, we can make variables that don't have an initial value. Let's start by giving it a name again. Let's call it buffer. Now this buffer has a different type than data bytes, because unlike data bytes where it allocates a certain amount of memory depending on how much there is put in, that's why there are different versions of this. It isn't just data bytes. There's also data word, there's data double word, there's data quad word. Now that being said, what kind of type does buffer need? It's actually res bytes. Res bytes is just an uninitialized version of data bytes. This means that we can't give it an initial value. However, we can give it a number of bytes to allocate. Let's for now just type 10. So all we can do is type 10 characters. Later, we can also test what happens if you type more than 10 characters. Now let's get standard in working. Let's start by making move eax3. Just like four is the number for sys write, three is the number for sys read. Next, let's move ebx0. Now for ecx, it's a bit different. We can't just do move ecx buffer, what we have to do is use a new instruction called load effective address. Now I'm not amazing at assembly, but from what I understand, the difference between move and load effective address is that move takes the data from the address of source. However, load effective address takes the value of source. It's really hard to understand and it took me a long time to, it's also really hard to explain. <laughs> But if you want, you can look it up. So I'll just type the command load effective address ECX and now between square brackets buffer between square brackets means that you are moving the address rather than the value at that address. So this means that you are moving the location of buffer into ECX. Now the last argument is move EDX. 10 because this is the length just like we have here it is just the amount of bytes now we can finally interrupt 0x80 here we go now we can input but what if we want it to parrot what we say because right now we don't really know what our input looks like it's actually incredibly simple and all we have to change is two things we change hello world to buffer and change len to 10. So after assembling and linking, it's time to run this by saying dot slash main. And now we can type. So let's say what's up and it types it back. There we go. Now, what if we type too many characters? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. All this will do is make us run the command A. 13, 14, 15, that's what it does. It will never overflow because it literally can't. Funnily enough, because you can overflow in C, this is actually more secure. Subscribe, I guess.